welcome again friends we've just discussed about the mechanism of action by fluoroquinolones or uh, the DNA or RNA synthesis inhibitors and we have seen the mechanism of action in detail and the activity was there uh, to block the activity of topoisomerase enzymes and which are the enzymes to solve the naughty problem during the replication and transcription that means to cleave the DNA and pass a strand and then re-ligate the DNA to release the tension that is giving a rise uh, to the movement of replication fork in the forward direction right now the antibiotic how, how they are interfering with this process antibiotic will go and they will bind with the subunit of topoisomerase either topoisomerase 2 or topoisomerase 4 after binding it with topoisomerase it will modify the topoisomerase in such a way that it will have only the function of cleavage but it will uh, lose the function of uh, re-ligation so it will eventually converting those topoisomerase enzymes into endonucleases right after it is converting it into the endonuclease it will be no longer functional right now in this case we'll be seeing the mechanism of resistance uh, against this kind of antibiotics in bacteria right now bacteria always try to develop some kind of resistance because they want to leave just like us they want to leave also and for that reason how they will modify their system to block this functionality there is only one major type of uh, uh, what you can say major type of uh, resistance that we can see in bacteria and that is due to mutation that is due to mutation now in this case mutation is functioning as a blessing for bacteria how now in this case what we know is that if this is so let me draw if here it is also it already drawn that if this is the uh, this is the topoisomerase enzyme having two units a unit for cleavage and a unit for, for joining subunit for cleavage subunit for joining now in this case what we know that mutation occurs now as a result of the mutation that mutated gene for example let's say if this is the gene if this is a bacterial uh, DNA gene somewhere there it gives rise to a simple spontaneous mutation as a result of that what it produces it produces a kind of protein so let's say a kind of uh, kind of structure like this let's say this now previously, for example, previously, this is the topoisomerase enzyme which was previously produced. Now, this is modified, modified topoisomerase or modified gyrus or gyrus, whatever. Now, as a result of this modification, this subunit, remember, among these two parts, cleavage subunit won't be affected by the antibiotic. Now, the affecting part will be this joining region right now in the previous case antibiotics here drawn as this red dots it will come and bind with this joining segment and it will convert it into functionless right but in this case as a result of the modification of this joining region there is less affinity for the joining region to bind with the antibiotic so antibiotics won't bind with this joining region that much they can bind but it is having less affinity to bind with this joining region as a result this topoisomerase this altered or modified topoisomerase can function or can retain both of their function function of uh, cleavage as well as function of joining as a result it will function properly inside the cell and cell will leave freely cell will leave for long period of time that is how usually bacteria develops resistance to modify the subunit which is responsible for the ligation during this replication or transcription process right and this process usually give rise via the mutation process so mutation it could be spontaneous mutation that is generated now once after the generation of this mutation uh, of this DNA and cell this cell suppose uh, of a population of many 10,000 20,000 bacteria 200 300 bacteria succeed uh, successfully make this or say two or three bacteria successfully have this kind of mutation this is beneficial for them they will start dividing and also they will try to convey this message to other bacteria right of, of his uh, generation of, of that bacteria's generation so what they will do they will supply this material to other bacteria via horizontal gene transfer like transformation conjugation or replica or 
transduction right so after the result of all this horizontal gene transfer more and more bacteria of the same generation will get this particular gene from one bacteria and they will get this resistance property that's how once when the resistance uh, initiate or develops into a bacteria it will be spreading so in bacterial resistance you need to consider two important facts first is the development of the resistance it can be via mutation it most of the time it, it is via spontaneous mutation and continuous exposure to the antibiotic and obviously uh, it can be it can also be uh, the transfer of that uh, resistance or propagation of the resistance so these are the two important parts you need to take care of okay so that's how they usually do this and obviously there are other mechanisms like like when the antibiotics enters into the body what they will do they are pumping the anti anti antibiotics outside now if there are cells cells are having different efflux pumps placed in the cell membrane transmembrane efflux pumps those are protein molecules are having channels so what they will do they will eventually pump out the antibiotics outside as a result the cell remains healthy so these are the processes of how antibiotic resistance usually occurs against uh, pluroquinolone quinolone drugs and i hope that's helpful thank you